I, I just I just feel like Jesse Pinkman in the later seasons of Breaking Bad. He can't keep getting away with it! Are you ready to watch a bunch of hockey players be a bunch of silly geese? Hi there, Steve Dangle here, and welcome to another edition of Steve's Dang It's, where we take a look at the, I guess, bloopers and just anything wacky or weird from the NHL over the past week. At the time I'm shooting this video, the NHL has canceled games for Thursday. I don't know when this video is going to go up. They might cancel more. Now, I've talked about the issues over the past week on other platforms. To talk about it in a Dang It's video feels inappropriate. To say racism is a dang it is tacky as hell. Uh, I'm just gonna say racism is a lot worse than that. So before I get started with the video, let me just say Black Lives Matter. It's not political. They do. Now, would you like to talk about some hockey? I want to start with one that I don't think producer Drew is gonna like very much. When you're a fan of a certain team, you carry different emotional baggage. For example, I can't look at a Boston Bruins jersey without vomiting. Also, as a Leaf fan, I'm just generally pessimistic about the outcome of anything. Producer Drew, on the other hand, he cheers for the Colorado Avalanche. He's been having a great time in recent weeks, and the only emotional baggage he has is an irrational fear of the Minnesota Wild. Like, Minnesota? That's your thing? But after the first two games of their series against the Dallas Stars, it was was quickly becoming the Dallas Stars. Drew does not do well with green teams and the Avs are looking for something, anything to get back in the series and this happens? Yes. And if I bounce stand off Regulov, it's in and the Stars have the lead. It's a face-off play and Radulov slips in behind and he just misses this puck with the stick but he gets a bounce off the skate as it goes up and over top of Franco's. Jamie Benn with a nice pass again. He looks right there and it goes off the stick of Gerard up off of Radulov. I thought it was actually the stick of Radulov that it goes off of but it goes off of Gerard off of Radulov and no chance for Franco's there. He loses track of it. He's trying to come across and play that puck has no idea that it pops up in the air and goes over his head and the stars. Like that's what we call a dang it. It is not a blooper necessarily or anyone on the abs screwing up. This is a dang it because it's really hard to stop NHL teams from scoring goals in the NHL. It's even harder to stop NHL teams from scoring goals in the Stanley Cup playoffs when they're trying to score them. If you're the Colorado Avalanche, this is absolutely a dang it because it is Alexander Radulov scoring by accident. And look at him, he doesn't care that it's an accident. Ah, this guy's adrenaline with a beard. And it's gotta be demoralizing enough when you allow any goal, when you give up a lead, but when you don't even know what you could have done better. Look at the avalanche on this play. Look at around, like, what, what am I supposed to, he didn't even mean to! We'll see if they can get back in the series, but for that goal and for producer Drew, that's a dang it. For our next dang it, I'm not even sure what this is. On the four check, got dead. And stepping up there was Edler. It comes loose. Brandon Sutter in front. And swing and a miss there by Roussel. What a chance that was to get on the board early in the third. What a big step up by Edler. Roussel bumped there by Reeves. He'll go back at him. And now Carrier out. There's Carrier and offside at the Vancouver line. And that's a little more like it, the urgency for the Canucks. And that's just stepping up and being proactive and into the rush. And a big hit on Wall by Edler turns that puck over. A nice backhand pass for Goddad. A little tic-tac-toe as Sutter tries to find Roussel and can't just pull the trigger. And Roussel and Reeves continue their discussion even into this third period as that's not a hug. And is this going to be a penalty of some kind? It looks like Roussel is going off. Vancouver, number 26, 10-minute misconduct. Well, it's not two minutes for hugging. It's a 10-minute nah. misconduct. I, mean, I didn't really see what he did afterwards if he did something, but if that's what he's given the 10-minute misconduct for, then uh, just go away. It's playoff hockey. Come on. So that's Antoine Roussel awkwardly hugging Ryan Reeves. Now, obviously, Roussel would be upset. He, he's an ornery player to begin with, but Ryan Reeves was a bull in a china shop throughout this entire shift, and Antoine Roussel had a golden chance to at least get the Canucks on the board. Goat horns, he whiffs on it. So after the play, he did what he always does, and he got in his opponent's face. But seeing his reaction, part of me wonders if he did that and at the last minute went, mm, 
It's Ryan Reeves, though. The heaviest of heavyweights throughout the NHL. Probably think twice, maybe even three times, before opening the Ryan Reeves door. <laughs> Antoine Roussel's like, I, I, I don't, I don't, okay, I'm just gonna. But what's funnier is he got 10 minutes for that. Is there anything else it could have been? Me think it might be him putting his stick where. Well, you, you know, you shouldn't have ought to put it there, there, Antoine. I've always heard with penalties that you should avoid taking them, but if you're gonna do it, make it count. Uh, I don't know if that's doing that. <laughs> that's a dang it. Heartwarming, but a dang it. Sticking with the Vegas Golden Knights, you know, it's unfortunate when this happened because we didn't get to talk about it. The Mark andre Fleury tweet, which was not tweeted by Mark andre Fleury, it was tweeted by his agent, Alan Walsh. I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about, but here's the since-deleted tweet from Mark andre Fleury's agent, Alan Walsh. It is Mark andre Fleury getting impaled by a sword, and it comes out the front of him, and there's blood and everything, it's super graphic, and would you look at that, Dabor engraved on the sword. Why? That's the name of his NHL coach. You mean to tell me Pete DeBoer just goes around stabbing his own team's players and he's got a name written on the sword? You never seen a detective show there, Pete? Now, everyone has their own favorite parts of this tweet. You could say the name on the sword or the blood or the what, just the general ridiculousness. Uh, one of the internet's favorites is the targets on the chest because it was obviously a screenshot taken of Photoshop. It's so good. It's like, where's Waldo. You're like, oh, I found something else too. My personal favorite part about the tweet, even though he's getting impaled by the sword, he still makes the save. Way to go there, MAF. Alan Walsh putting it out there, even if my clients suffer a mortal wound from a medieval weapon, they perform. Marc-Andre Fleury getting a lot of heat. And a lot of people are like, hey, that's not fair. Marc-Andre Fleury is, is, is a beautiful man who is happy and smiling and all the time. You ever see his teeth, he's happy. And he didn't send the tweet, his agent did. Well, that's true. So let's ask Mark andre Fleury. Did, did you know that he was going to tweet that? Hey, Mark, so you kind of answered it, but just wanted to know, like, what was your communication with Alan during that? Did you have any idea he was going to send it? And, and if so, what did you say to him? Um, like I said, I think we've been talking, right, at, uh, through the playoffs. Um, obviously, I, I love playing. I love being in the net and um, uh, being out there, right? Um, and I mean, it's just a, like I said, he's, he's, he's been on Twitter for a long time and um, he's just trying to, uh, to protect me a bit. Well, that was a big bunch of words, but he didn't say that he knew about it. Oh wait, there's a follow up. Hey Mark, so, so did, did you know he was going to publish the picture? It's the same question as before. Uh, yeah, he, yeah. Come on, that was up for hours and hours. And if someone that I paid a lot of money to, and Mark andre Fleury gives Alan Walsh a lot of money, if someone I gave money to had that tweet up and I didn't want it up, it would be down like that. It wasn't because, why, do you, what, why might it have been up for so long? To me, just, what are you doing? That's a dang it. How would, <laughs> that's one of the most ridiculous things I've seen on Aki Twitter, and I've seen some stuff. Do you want to know who made the picture? I, I do, badly. You, it wasn't Alan, it couldn't have been. He taught himself Photoshop. Did he DM someone on Twitter? Hello, random younger relative. I have a can't miss idea. Well, Robin Leonard got lit up in game two, so might get your wish there. And he's available to play too, not even on the IR because of the sword, that's amazing. For our next dang it, what are you doing there? He'll pass off. Andre Kasha takes the shot. Vasilevsky made a nice save. Hasn't had to make a lot of them. Another battle behind the play. That is going to be a scrap. And there's also going to be a goal. At one end, Braden Point scores a beautiful goal. Meantime, at the other end, there's a scrap going on. It's Tory Krug and Tyler Johnson. They were almost simultaneous. I mean, the gloves were coming off literally while Point was coming in. And he put the puck in the back of the net and turned to celebrate and could see a fight going on at the other end of the rink. Yeah, you know, a curious situation that was. Krug went hard to the net. You can see in the back, they're just pushing and shoving down. How about this move? Backhand, forehand, that's a, such a tough position. Your fourth time of facing a shot, and that was just something that Braden Point has done his whole life. That speed, he just came in, didn't allow much time for later to react. Here's the battle down at this end. One punch to the face, hold the stick, punch back. 
Ah, oh, the gloves were off before the puck was even in. <laughs> and look at that. You can see Point celebrating and then looks at this direction and sees this going on. They were about 195 feet apart. A goal and a fight at the same time. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, that's so unfortunate. Tori Krug, who plays defense, going deep into the Tampa Bay Lightning zone. And, hey, let's not criticize where Tori Krug is going. That dude knows what he's doing. He puts up a lot of points. But while he is caught deep in the Tampa zone, he decides, well, I'm here anyway. I'm going to get in a scrap. Does he win or lose the fight? I mean, he gets the takedown, but the Lightning get a goal! You can see in the back, they're just pushing and shoving now. And how about this move? Backhand, forehand, that's a, such a tough position. Your fourth time of facing a shot, and that was just something that Braden Point has done his whole life. That speed, he just came in. While Tory Krug is down there tussling with Tyler Johnson, who, yeah, known heavyweight, Braden Point, because of course it's Braden Point, it's always Braden Point, takes it down the ice for a breakaway. That that ice is it. Getting a breakaway for a 5-1 lead against Boston and actually scoring on it. Wow. Matt Fratton comes up at therapy a lot. I'm not gonna call that a dang it on Tory Krug because he shouldn't have been there. I'm gonna call it a dang it because Dude, you fight to turn momentum around, not while you're getting scored on. Ah, that's a dang it. Our next dang it also involves the Boston Bruins. Drew and I just labeled this one Marshan being Marshan. Behind the net, Bergeron comes back and he gets another clear and he's going to go to the bench. A short penalty killing ship. Marshan added with Braden Point right by the bench. Tempted tip in front by Gord. And this is, look at this, is this holding? Marshan grabbing the back of Braden Point and trying to make it look like Point's grabbing him. He takes him out of the play for a good five or six seconds. I, I just I just feel like Jesse Pinkman in the later seasons of Breaking Bad. He can't keep getting away with it! You know, Brad Marchand, wily veteran in this league, wily veteran. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to get away with just the little things when it's behind the play and it's away from the officials and- Oh wait, no! They're standing right there! Right there! What's wrong with you? It has been a bit in these Dang It's videos for over a year now that Brad Marchand specifically, Bruins fan, like, I'm not, I'm not even going to make it just about the Bruins. Brad Marchand specifically has to, I wonder how many he brought to the bubble, has to bring autograph sticks and just hand them out to every official. At every opportunity, he's talking to them, he's laughing with them and joking with them, and he's hanging around with them and being chummy. And I mean, really, are you going to send a guy to the box if you have a sign stick and a picture of him hanging in your front hallway? No! Oh, it's playoff hockey, bro. Oh, very close. It's actually playoff hockey. HOLDING! How don't you call that? You saw it! The only conclusion I have left? Sign sticks. Dang. And this one, oh, this this one's painful. Derek Grant, who uh, made a recent video because he gave a little head pat to Nick Suzuki there, getting him back for what he did to Carter Hart. Derek Grant, not so lucky in this one, courtesy of Matt Barzal. Well, he'll skate the puck over center and into the attacking zone. Put it over in Jordan Eberle's corner. Oh, Barzell's stick got up on Derek Grant, who's already missing a few chicklets. Yeah, you could see them flying on the ice. I mean, that was just terrible timing. Not malicious, I don't think. He wasn't looking, but very careless as the high stick right in the face. Oh, just a wave of the fucking... He got Grant right in the face. <laughs> Everyone brush your teeth extra good tonight because you still have them. Show it again, show it again. Oh, the slow motion was made for this. Here we go. Boom. Oh, and the teeth, that is awful. That is ghastly. You really gotta wonder what the heck Matt Barzal was doing. Matt Barzal was wondering what the heck Matt Barzal was doing on that one. Look at his reaction. Look at, look at, why would I swing my stick at his head like a baseball bat? That was a dumb thing to do. For Derek Grant's sake, I hope they serve mashed potatoes in the bubble. That is, wow. I gotta say, look at him handle it like a champ. He's just like, it's a minor inconvenience that he got half his mouth knocked out. What a champ. For Matt Barzal, it's a dang it because why, but for Derek Grant, who is the one who is missing teeth. Ugh. That's a dang it, buddy. Sorry. So, that was Steve's Dang It's this week. Did you like it? Are you happy? Leave a comment in the comment box down below. Was there anything that we missed? I'm sure there was. There usually is, man. There's a lot of hockey. And every time we miss them, we go dang it. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell your friends. Sign sticks. They always come in handy. Just 
Keep them below your shoulder there, Matt. Come on. <laughs>